Okay, you alluded to where I want to go early in the conversation. Best of Both Worlds tour. Jay-Z, R. Kelly. This is kind of the night that you really, I guess, got your, 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 you cemented your way in the life of Puff. What happened that night? And how did you really go from, okay, I'm holding Loon down and I'm, and, and I'm driving, doing whatever, to now I'm, I'm side by side with Puff damn near every day. It, 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 it's funny, it's funny how that happened because, like I told you, my man Nick was there. And my man Nick is the one that brought me in. If you remember back then, we had the studio at the same time. So we needed security at the studio. We needed security at 17 to, or 1440 at that time. 1440, we needed security everywhere. So my man always was like, he was, always would beat somebody up. You know what I'm saying? So Puff said, yo, B, I can't have him with me no more. You know what I'm saying? He a good dude. I love him to death, but let's put him at the studio and let's get the other one that we got at the studio with us. You know, your driver, Paul, your driver. So what happened was, you know, of course, Paulie want to stay in the car. Love you, Uncle Paulie. He like, yo, man, yeah, you know, you go in with Puff this, this night. You know what I'm saying? So me and Puff walks in and as um, R. Kelly is performing, the lights go out and the whole joint, like it just go black. So I, you know, I'm reaching for Puff because I can't see nothing. So I'm holding him. And then when the light come on, he said, yo, was that shit for real? I said, yeah. And then Al Kelly dropped the mic and walked off the stage, right? So Puff took off. And, it, and I'm, I'm going to give it, yo, this is the first night that it's really just me and him. And this is the first night that I, 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 I as a man, I respected him as a man because he ran from that audience and he ran straight backstage. Of course, security moved out the way and he, he ran straight backstage and he told Jay, he said, yo, what's up? So Jay was like, yo, this nigga just walked off on me, yo. And I ain't gonna lie, Puff took the chains off his neck, put him around Jay's neck and he said, yo, this is New York, we here. And if you remember, Ja Rule and R. Kelly had a big hit together. So Ja yep. Rule was there to perform with Al Kelly and Ja Rule turned around and said, nah, I'm rocking with you. We gonna hold it down. Mary J came from the audience, said we gonna get him a show. But at that same time, R. Kelly must have realized what he did because him and his whole crew was on their way back to the stage. So if you ever been in back of Madison Square Garden, you could see them all walking up, guns in their hands, security had the guns out and everything. And I'm like, oh shit. So Tata jumps up and Tata got some mace in his pocket. In my <laughs> mind, I'm saying, fuck is this mace gonna do with these guns? But Tata, <laughs> the dude tried to get on stage, Tata starts spraying the mace. You know what I'm saying? So I grab Puff and I throw Puff behind me. You know what I'm saying? And I swing on the dude that's coming up. And the next thing I know, me and Tata running across the stage, Jay performing and everything. We done ran across the stage and we got out the joint and I put Tata inside the car. And um, about 20 minutes later, Puff calls me and said, yo, where you at? You know what I'm saying? I said, yo, I'm in daddy's house. He said, nah, you gotta come to 4040. I said, why? He said, yo, Jay-Z just asked about you, man. He said, Tata told him, yo, your man, yada, 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 yada. You know, he held me down. So he said he wanna meet you. So that was like, and then Puff hit me back and said, yo, meet me at Mr. Child's right now. So he had Uncle Paulie. He said, yo, man, tell you, he didn't even know my name. He said, tell you, man, yo, I want him to come in and eat with us tonight. You know what I'm saying? So that was the first, that was the first incident where it was like, yo, no, Paul, you don't understand. These niggas had guns and everything out there. Your man went into action. Yada, yada, yada. So that was like the solidification of, I don't mind him being with me every day. So that's what changed from me just being Paul Driver to me coming out every day. You know how I was, you was there. Yep, you know what I'm yep. saying, 20 hour days, 19 hour days each and every day. And the next thing I know, it wasn't until like 2003 where I really had to tell Loon like, yo, I can't really rock with you no more that way, you know? Cause Puff is like, how many people in the industry could actually give you health care? You know what I'm saying? Allow you to take care of your family every day. We know how security is. It's off and on, on and off. And at that time right there, 
I was through with the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, I got to see how we could live. I had never had that opportunity. I'd never been off the block. At this point in time, I've probably been around the world one time. You know what I'm saying? And stayed in the best of everything. And I was, that's when I was, I, I was 100% through with the streets. Once you show me that. Oh, crazy story. And, you know, you was rocking. And again, before I go forward, we, we mentioned his name a couple of times, but I do want to shout out Uncle Paulie, man. Um, it's so many good brothers who came up through this system that Paulie pulled right off the street. And he gave him an opportunity to do honest work, gave him an opportunity to really have a career, you know. So so we got to shout him out. 